Yo guys, it's Cortez here, and today I'm bringing you guys a tutorial on how to use layer styles, or at least how I use layer styles. Um, I use it different than most people, because a lot of people just have like a certain measurement for every single, uh, every single text that they do, but mine varies depending on what text I'm doing and like what font and all that stuff, so I'm just going to show you guys the way that I do it. But before I start... Um, can you guys please just leave like comments on what you guys want to see like what tutorials exactly you want to see because I even I had a trouble th coming up with this tutorial today like I was thinking about it all day while I was at work thinking about what tutorial to make um, and this was the only one I could come up with for some reason I don't know because I know what I know but I don't know what you guys don't know so you guys gotta let me know what you guys want don't be afraid to leave it in the comments, even if it's something stupid. I mean, if it's something really stupid, you can always just PM me on YouTube, and that's fine if you don't want people to see you, like, I don't know, if you guys feel like that, but please just let me know, because I need more tutorial ideas. Um, thanks, I'd really appreciate that. But now to get right into this tutorial, um, this is going to be a Photoshop tutorial, of course, as you can see, I'm using CS6, and you're going to get your text tool. And I already set up the background just for time's sake. Um, if you guys want to know how to do that, it's fairly simple. I can show you guys how to set up stuff like that. Um, but anyways, let's do this. I'm going to make the text say tutorial. Um, and the way that I choose my font, I mean, that's really just personal preference. A lot of people ask me how I choose my font, but it's really up to you like what you use no one else um, so you can choose whatever font you want for layer styles I usually don't like to use a thin a very thin thin font because I don't know the layer styles won't look as good and or as noticeable so I like to use a good size font you know that has some width to it so I'm just gonna use this one this one is Batman I think something Batman forever or something like that if you guys wanted to know what font this was but anyways, you're going to come here to your text, you're going to double click on it to bring up the layer styles, or you can right click and go to layer styles. And these are the ones that you have here. Um, I'm going to go through the ones that are used mostly, and you guys can experiment with these, or use other ones that I don't go over. Bevel and emboss, it's basically giving it a little 3D, like looking like it's popping out. Um, I'll go over how to make that look nicer in a second. Um, there's stroke. Well, here, let me just show you guys this, actually. These are all your settings in here, and I'm going to show you guys how to use that later. And you can also use contour and texture. Uh, texture, not really used too much. Um, if you want to get a texture on it, I would recommend doing, like, clipping mask or something, or an overlay, or using pattern overlay, which I'll show you guys. Um... And then stroke, come here, you can change the size of it. Um, you can change the blend mode, you can change the opacity, and you can also change the color to whatever you want. Um, check that off. Inner shadow, it makes it, it gives it like an indented look, and I'll go over how to use that in a second, um, or how I use it. And then there's also inner glow. Uh, you can't really see it because it's white, but I mean, you can't, yeah, you can't see it because it's white and it's set on screen, but if you use it on different stuff like overlay or something and then, you know, like change the colors up, you can sometimes use it. Um, I use that for other stuff that I'll show you guys in a bit. Um, satin, I don't use very much, so I'm not too sure what that does. Uh, color over overlay. It's basically changing, being able to change the color to whatever you want. Um, that comes in handy if you're trying to change the color of something else, not really text. Uh, gradient overlay, being able to change, use the colors that you want. You know, just that normal stuff. Um, pattern overlay, you have a bunch of patterns. Uh, I've downloaded a bunch of these. It doesn't come with many that are already uh, pre-programmed in it. You can get those anywhere. Outer glow, um, pretty self-explanatory. You can change this. Uh, you can change the opacity. That comes in handy with 
manipulations in my opinion not really too much with text but you do use it for text a little bit um, when it comes to like overlaying and stuff and then drop shadow pretty self-explanatory you can change you know giving it a shadow making it look like a more 3d um, but anyways I'm gonna go into how I personally use this um, let me just move this over and zoom in a bit and move over so you guys can see it better come here um, I'm gonna have to cover a little bit of it but you guys will see what I mean alright so for bevel and emboss um, I like to add the contour sometimes see so yeah, it gives it like a darker one depending on what I'm doing but you can change the depth here I usually like to keep the depth not too much um, you know like 63 maybe I don't know something around there like not too much and then you can change the size of it uh, I don't really put the size too much just around like five and then soften makes soften I like to use a lot because it like doesn't make it so harsh and like you know so it doesn't look very real so I like to put the softness up a little bit um, that looks good for now like you can always change it later and then stroke I like to add a little bit of a stroke not too much I mean you don't want it obviously you know something like that I mean you can but I wouldn't recommend it you know just like three four something like that um, and then when I put the stroke I usually that's when I usually mess around with this and see if there's some stuff I need to change or anything um, that looks pretty good you know just coming and messing around with how you perceive that it'll look the best it's all a lot of it is based on how you want it to look so I don't follow everything I do exactly um, for inner shadow if I mean for indent indenting I'll probably show that another time this is more for like 3d um, but for when you're doing a 3d one I like to put it to distance zero um, choke a little bit a little bit of size not too much like 8 10 something like that and then I like to uncheck global light put this to 90 whoops um, inner shadow and then change the color to white and then change this to overlay and this it's hard to notice probably for you guys but it gives it a little bit of a white whiting around it to make it look a bit more realistic and popping out and then the same thing is for inner glow you're gonna come here change this to white and you're gonna change this to overlay and I think the opacity Capacity is not too important. I'll just leave it at 75. Um, you don't really have to mess with this here. And then color overlay. I'm not going to get into that. And then a really important one is gradient overlay. Because gradient overlay is going to give you that metallic looking sort of feel to it. Um, and I like to use a silverish overlay. Um, I don't. I have another video if you guys want to come and get these gradients because I've spent a lot of time getting all these gradients I have hundreds of gradients with a lot of variety that are can be used in anything from backgrounds photo man manipulations and anything I have another video that's giving them away but I haven't gotten the amount of likes that I uh, requested on it so if you guys want those go ahead and go to my video and like that video I'll try and put it in an annotation here Unless it's on Cinema 4D Tuts, you can always just come over to my channel if you're watching this on Cinema 4D Tuts and find that video. But anyways, I like to give it like a silver one. This one looks good. And then just bring the opacity down to around uh, 70. Yeah, I think 65. Actually, let's go with 70. Yeah, that looks good. Alright, and then I just like having it like that gives it a little bit of a metallic feel um, you can mess with the opacity of it depending on what you want but I like to keep it around 70 just my personal opinion and then for pattern overlay this is all up, up 
like up to what you want. Um, I don't usually add to oh, overlay. I usually add a clipping mask of a texture that I have saved up in all my files. But you're more than welcome to add one. This one looks fine. Um, then set it to soft light. Looks the best. Um, outer glow. Again, it's the same thing as inner glow. You're going to set it to white. And then you're going to set this to overlay. And it's going to give it a little shining around the outside of it. And then one of my favorite ones, drop shadow. Um, drop shadow, this is another one that's based off what you want um, it's up to you for this one I'm probably gonna just put this to 7 put the spread to around 20 and then you don't want the size too much maybe around 10 let's lower this distance a little bit looks a little too much 5 maybe let's see yeah 5 looks good all right, so that's basically what comes out if you do that. You see all these layers right here. If I were to take it off, that's how it originally looks. And then if you put it on, that's how it looks after. So it does look a lot better. And then another thing that you can do to give it an even more metallic look. Um, this is actually supposed to be under this. Oh, well, that explains all that grunge that was on there. My bad. Um, all right, so... That's good. Alright, that looks better. No wonder all that grunge was on it. I was, I was wondering what that was. Um, another thing you can do though is create a new layer and you're going to come to your pen tool and you're going to set this to white and you're going to come right here and come to the end of the text over here. Make a bit of a curve. And if you don't know what I'm doing with this pen tool, I have another tutorial on the way that I use the pen tool and the best way I think to use the pen tool. So you can, you're more than welcome to go check that out so you can know what I'm doing. Um, just gonna fill this with white. All right. And then I'm gonna bring this down and turn it a little bit. set this like that oh wait I forgot to do something um, here another thing you gotta do to make sure that because when you put oh my bad I was moving when you put gradient overlay it takes away any colors that you're trying to put on top of it so what you gotta do is you make a new layer and then you select your text and you select this one and you're gonna right click and go to merge layers and now when you do that, now it works. Um, and then you're gonna bring down the opacity a lot. Not on that. And this. To maybe, yeah, around there, 7%. Uh, that curve wasn't the best and honestly, could have done much better than that, but you get the point, you just make a curve that goes like from here, comes across the middle of the text and then comes a bit down. Um, just gives it more of a shiny metallic look to it. But yeah, that's basically the tutorial for today guys. Uh, thanks guys for watching, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and make sure to comment with some more tutorials you guys want to see because, like I said, I had some trouble coming up with the tutorials. Um, and if you're watching this on Cinema 4D Tuts, make sure to come and check out my channel for more speed arts and more tutorials and just a bunch of random commentaries because that's what I like to do. Um, so I'll see you guys later. Have a good day.